Functions. So I know it's not unit one, but that's okay for us. Um, transformations and functions is transformations and then other functions. So adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and composition of functions is at the end if we get to it. So this goes through your whole reflections, all that stuff that you already know. It's just a little reminder for you to look at it. It says in varying points, a point on a graph that remains unchanged after a transformation is applied to it. Any point on a curve that lies on the line of a reflection is an invariant point. So if they literally just gave you questions like this, where it was like this, and I said, how many invariant points are there if there's a reflection in the, so say the original is y equals g of x, and say I do this, y equals negative g of x, and I ask for the number of invariant points, how many would there be? What is that, a reflection on the? on the x-axis. So if it reflects on the x-axis, this bubble is going to come down here, then like this, then like this. How many are invariant? One, two, three. So there'd be three invariant. What if I said y equals g of negative x? So how many? One invariant. What if I said y equals g of negative a half x. So it's still going to be where? What am I multiplying? By negative 2, what variable? x. It's with the x, so I'm multiplying the x's by negative 2. What value would x be that it wouldn't change if I multiply by negative 2? Zero. So I'm looking where x is, and how many places is x zero? One. It's the y-axis. This is the exact same question as the previous one. What if I said y um, x equals g of y? How many? What do you do? Where do you? How do you draw a line when it's that's an inverse, right? So it's y equals x line, right? So how many did it cross through? One, two. Yeah? That's your invariance. OK, just going over domain and range again. Uh, what's the domain of this graph in interval and set? It's not y. X E R and in interval notation. Okay, range in set builder. And what's that in set? Okay, what about B? What's your domain? Greater than or equal to. Why is it equal to? Yeah. And there's lines. Even if this was an open dot, um, then you'd have to we'd still counter it. Um, so negative 3 to infinity, round bracket. Range? Why is, is it greater than? Yes. Because it actually maxes out at 4, but it is greater than or equal to 1. So we're going to go minimum. 1 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to maximum, which is 4, y, e, r. So it would be 1, 4, square brackets. What about this one? The C domain. is between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6. x, negative 6 is less than or equal to 1. Oops, x is less than or equal to 1. x, e, r. Oh! Open dots. I don't know why I said that, but I did. A good catch. I'm going to pretend that I did that like to, for a learning experience, but it was not. Okay, so... Negative 6 and 1 round brackets. Now, when they're both round brackets, what's the problem with that? 
What do people think that is? A point. So you have to read the question thoroughly. There is not one extra word on the diploma. Every word is there for a reason. Sometimes it's connecting words, but they are there for a reason. So if you're just skimming and like, I know how to do this question, mm, don't skim. There's words there for a reason. It might be false or true. It might be um, domain and range, and you look at it and it's a point. It's not a point. It says range beside it, right? So we have to read every single word. If that means you highlight so that you know you've read it because you're highlighting over every single word, then highlight every single word on your test. I do not care. But you need to read every single word on your test. Okay? The range is y such that 0 is less than or equal to... Oh, I did it again. It's less than... Habit. Less than y is less than... 2, 3, 4, 5. and then 0 to 5. And you could be asked either one, right? You're welcome. All okay. right. Demonstrate an understanding of the effects of horizontal and vertical translations on the graph of functions and their related equations. So, Okay, so here's your graph of y equals f of x. It's better on your paper. Um, I want you to draw the new graph. What do we do when we go from a graph to a graph? What do we use? Mapping. And what do we have to make sure we do to this? First, move the two over. So try that one out. So we're going to have x, y is going to become x 3 to the left, so minus 3, y plus 2. So what's this coordinate at? You guys are going to have to help me because I can't really see. Negative 2, negative 5. So it's going to become negative 2 minus 3 and then negative 5 plus 2. So negative 5 and negative 3. Here. That goes that way. Okay, and then I'm going to pull this one off. Why don't I need to pull a whole bunch in between? Because all I'm doing is translating, right? I'm not having to stretch and reflect, which makes totally different, way more work. Okay, what's this one at? One and negative one. So it's going to become 1 minus 3, negative 1 plus 2. So negative 2 and 1. I'm going to guess it's there. I don't really know. And then it's going to go like this. So if you're given that, that would be like the best question ever on the planet of man, right? Okay. So given y equals, uh, sorry, y minus k equals a x minus h squared, where a equals negative 1. So it says a equals negative 1. So I'm going to replace that. And h is greater than 0. So what could we put? 4? k is less than 0, what can we put? Negative 2. Okay. So we're going to get y minus a minus 2 equals negative 1, x minus 4 squared, right? So we have y plus 2 equals negative 1, x minus 4 squared. y equals negative 1, x minus 4 squared minus 2. So what's my vertex at? Uh, 4 and negative 2. And what's my graph? Concave up, concave down. Down because of the leading coefficient, so it ends down on the left, which also means it ends down on the right because it's degree 2. So in which quadrant is it? So we go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. Down. What quadrant is this? Four. So just because they give you letters doesn't mean you have to keep it as letters. If they tell you what those letters stand for, why wouldn't you put a number in? But I always put in, like, I don't go, like, 2 and negative 2. Like, I wouldn't keep the same number. I would make them be specifically different so you can see, like, this is a 2, this is a 3, this is a 5. I would never go, like, 2 and 2 ever. Okay. So, what about this one? 
given the function of f of x equals absolute value x plus 3 plus 2, bless you, and g of x equals absolute value of x minus 2 plus 1, describe transformations. If we want to describe transformations, we can compare them completely by using their vertex, right? These are absolute value functions. They make v's for the most part. Well, these ones specifically do. So if I look at where one vertex is to the other vertex, I can see how much I've moved as well, right? So what's the vertex of this one at? Negative 3 and 2. Yep, the rules don't change on any graph. So when it's x plus something or x minus, it's the same rule. No absolute value. The, if I plugged a number into that, it would turn positive, but it doesn't change my transformation. Yeah, which is great because then transformation is the same no matter what. Okay, and then our other one is at two and one. So if I have to read two, what's becoming what? So it says. We'll transform y equals f of x to become g of x. Because if not, you're going to give the opposite transformations. Will they be there? Yes. So we're going from f of x to g of x. What did we do? We went down 1 and 2, 3, 4, 5, right. So we have a horizontal translation, 5, right, and a vertical translation, 1, down. Now remember... The only time it's not called horizontal translation and vertical translation is when it is a trig, and then it's called vertical displacement, horizontal phase shift. They're the same thing, but in trig, they're called horizontal phase shift, vertical displacement. I still use vertical and horizontal, so it shouldn't freak you out. Okay? Describe the transformations. So we're going the transformation of the function f of x equals x cubed is described in mapping notation. This is original, this is the new. Describe the transformations on f of x. What do we have? What's x plus 2? Horizontal translation to right, because it's only opposite when it's in what? The equation. When it's in words, it's you do what you say. When it's mapping, you're doing what you're saying, right? The only time it's opposite is when it's in the equation. So if I went and they gave me this mapping and they wanted me to put it back into the equation, what would we do? So we have a horizontal translation to right. If I went to go put it back into this equation, say I made it vg of x. I would get x minus 2 cubed. We agree? And we have a vertical translation what? 5 down. Hmm? No, tomorrow is the English diploma. Okay, does that make sense? So, the graph of f of x equals x squared, the function g of x sketched below right is a translation of f of x. Determine the equation of g of x. Try it out. So remember when we come up with equations, what we have to do is figure out the stretch and reflections first, apply them, and then see how you have to move it to get to the new one, right? So. This graph is reflected at all? No. So if I go over 1 to the right, I go up 1. This Or over 1 to the left, I go up 1. If I go over 1 to the left, I go up 2. So what is it? Vertical stretch by factor of 2. OK, we're going to keep that in mind. So we have y equals 2 currently. OK? So. If I stretch, which one do I stretch now? The second one or the first one by a factor of 2? You stretch the first one, and then you're going to move it to be the second one. We agree? So if I stretch this one vertically by 2, 1, 1 is going to become 1, 2. And negative 1, 1 is going to become 1. And neg 1 and 1 is going to become 1 and 2. Wow, that was hard. I don't know why that was. That was just bad. OK, so I'm at 0, 0 still, correct? This is why quadratics rock, because if you're at a basic quadratic, it's literally just going to move. So I'm here currently, correct? And then I'm here and here. So now I can figure out my translations. What do I have to do? 
One, two, three down and okay. So I'm going to have x minus two squared. What's the catch with squared so? Can I bring this two inside? So if I had y equals x squared, let's say, and I had y equals 2x squared, could I not write that as y equals? That is how I'm writing it now. How would I bring it inside? 4x squared. Would it be 4x squared? 4x squared is what? When you expand that out, what is that? 16. So was that right? No. What would I have to do in order to get this 2 to go underneath? Let's try half. Half x squared. What's that? 1 quarter x squared. Is that still 2x squared? No. Not there yet. Okay. What can we do? Square root it. Square root of 2x squared, what would that be? 2x squared. Would that work? Yes. So what would this actually be? A horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 over root 2, which is root 2 over 2. Yeah. So you can have a vertical stretch with an x squared, and they can give you, ask you for a horizontal. So say I found my vertical stretch was y equals 16x squared, which is more so how they're going to do it. So I have a vertical stretch by a factor of 16, or I have a horizontal stretch by a factor of what? Not root of 4. Root of 16. 4. <laughs> you take the square root of the number and bring it inside, which is 4. Yes. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Square that. What is it? 16x squared? I don't think you're sure, but I'm sure. Okay, good. All right. So this graph has been moved horizontally what? The center was here. The center is now and so it's going to be y equals 5 or f, sorry, don't know why I said 5, starts with an f, I don't know, x minus 1, um, minus 2. Okay. If you're given the graph of y equals f of x, describe the translations you would need to draw the graph of y minus k equals f of x minus h, given that h equals negative 3 and k equals negative 4. So we'd have y minus a minus 4 equals f times x minus a minus 3. So we actually have y plus 4 equals f of x plus 3, and then move the 4 over. So what translations do we have? Vertical translation, 4 down. Horizontal translation, 3 left. An aside, what if I gave you the equation y equals negative x plus 3 squared minus 2? And I say it has a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 about the x-axis, a reflection in the x-axis, horizontal stretch by a factor of 4, don't know why I went out of the order, but I did, the y-axis. Vertical translation to up. What do I have to apply first? So this is the original. 
This is the original. This original has vertical stuff already happening, correct? I have to apply everything to the vertical stuff. So I have a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 and a reflection in the x. So what am I multiplying by? Close. Negative 2. OK, so I'm multiplying the whole side by, oh my gosh, negative 2. So I have to put the whole thing in brackets. So this is one term. This is another term. When I multiply negative 2 times this, I'm going to get 2x plus 3 squared. Then what? Plus, plus 4. Do you see how it has to apply to that vertical translation? Do you see how they're probably going to have an answer where you don't and you're going to pick it? Don't be those people. It's not a good thing to be. Yeah? Then I said I had a horizontal stretch by a factor of a quarter. So I'm going to get 4 in here, x plus 3 squared plus 4. And then, oh, a quarter. I said horizontal stretch by a factor of a quarter, and I have a 4. Good job. So I have to put it in as a quarter. And then a vertical translation 2 up. What do I do now? So I'm going to get. Now, what if I apply that 2 first? Will that answer be there? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? It is positive too. I don't know what you're saying. Nope, that's a positive too. This is me applying. I put the negative 2 out front and I'm distributing it in. I have to multiply by negative 2. You just said that. In the next step, when you multiply negative 2 times a negative 1, you get positive 2. OK. So domain is affected by what? What's in the brackets with the x. And range is affected by what's not in there. OK. So we have g of x equals negative 3 f x minus 2 minus 1. So if I did mapping, I'd have x plus 2, and my y would be negative 3 y minus 1. Correct? I just apply those to my domain and range. So this one, I'm going to move my domain from negative 1 to 3, 2 to the right. So it's now going to be at 1 and 5. My range is the hard one. I'm going to multiply by negative 3, then subtract 1. So 2 times negative 3 is minus 1. And then negative 3 times 6 is negative 3 times 6 is negative 18. Subtract 1 is negative 19. Demonstrate an, demonstrate an understanding of the effects of reflections on the graph of functions and their related equations, including reflections through x-axis, y-axis, line of y equals x. So when I gave you that question at the very beginning where I said how many invariant points, they could do that as well for here, right? Um, the ordered pair below re represents possible transformations to point A, B. So point A is this, point 1, point 2, point 3, point 4, point 5, point 6. If y equals f of x undergoes the following single transformation, identify the co coordinates of the corresponding point p on the new graph. So this corresponding point, this is a reflection in the x. It's not with the x, so it affects the 
Why? So my point was a b. It's now going to be a negative b, which is point three. This one is a horizontal stretch by a factor of four. It's with the x, so it affects the x. So instead of it being a b, it's going to be four a b, which is one. This one's a vertical stretch by a factor of a quarter. It's not with the x, so it affects the y. So I'm going to get a and a quarter b. A quarter b can be written as a comma b over 4. You can multiply it through. So it is 4. And then negative x. So x can become negative. So it's negative a comma b, which is 2. 3, 1, 4, 2. Demonstrate and understanding the effects of horizontal and vertical stretches on the graph of functions and their related equations. The graph of the function y equals f of x is transformed to produce the graph of the function g of x. I've given this to you guys before. They want just stretches. So no transformations can move this, only stretches. f is the original, g is the new. And how do you know that? Because the transformed graph has a little f in it. So that means that the f is the original. So I'm going to compare... Um, it to the y-axis. So f is 1 away from the y, where g is 3 away from the y. So what happened? So we're going to get our x to be multiplied by 3. Now why can I just compare it with the y? Because I have no vertical or horizontal translations on this one. So I can literally, it's going to have to be stretched in order to be translated. So this had to be, this was 1 away, and now it's 3 away, so it had to be stretched 3. So you're going to get 1 third x. And then your y, if I go to my y, from down the bottom to here, that's 2. From the bottom up to where it crosses, that's one, two, three, four. So what happened? Vertical stretch by a factor of two. Okay. Twelve. We get the sketch of the graph with this. So we have a horizontal stretch. Or vertical stretch by a factor of what? About the <laughs> x axis. Horizontal stretch, don't do what I just did at all, that's terrible. I'm lazy. By a factor of 3, now I feel guilty. About the. What's in front of the brackets affects the y, so I'm going to get 1 half y. And what's in the brackets affects the x, so I'm going to get 3x. So all of my x, um, x's are going to be multiplied by 3, and our, my y's are going to be halved. So what's this coordinate again? Negative 2 and negative 5. It's going to become 3 times negative 2, comma negative 5 times a half, or a half times negative 5. So I'm going to get negative 6 and negative 2.5. Here. And then this one is what? So I'm going to get 3 times 1, comma, a half times negative 1. So I'm going to get 3 and negative 0.5. Okay. I don't even know. <laughs> 1, 2, 3? Sure. And you should have drawn it on the other one. Not quite sure why I drew it on this one, but I did. So there's that. Okay. Okay. Why is this one actually a nice question? Everything is on the right hand side, and the negative 3 is taken out of the x. Yeah. Okay, try it out.
so they could be cert. These are both multiplied, so they could be this way or this way. Yeah. So you get negative four thirds plus three over three, which is negative one third and five. Okay. Does it make sense? I stretched it by two, so it should be double in height. I horizontally stretched it by a third, so it's squished horizontally. It's reflected in the Y, and then it's moved one to the right and one down, so it seems pretty realistic. Okay? 14, the graph of Y equals F of X is reflected in the X axis. I would make sure you highlight stuff because people will miss like reflected in the x-axis and then they'll do all the rest of the work and just miss like a word, which is not cool. Reflected in the x-axis, stretched vertically about the x-axis by a factor of a third, stretched horizontally by four, create the graph of y equals g of x for the point negative three, six on the graph of y equals f of x. Determine the corresponding point on g of x. Okay, so we have... We're moving a point. What do we need to do? Mapping. So we have x, y. What affects my x? True, but I have no equation. So what affects my x? Yeah, and reflections in the y. The only thing I have here is a horizontal stretch. It's by a factor of 4, I do as I say. 4x. The only time it flips is if it comes out of the equation. So if it says that x in the equation is 4x, then you would flip it, right, if it gives you replacement notation. So we get 4x and then comma, reflected in the x-axis means negative y by a factor of a third, and that's it, right? Then my original point is negative 3, 6. You need to make sure you read. 
did they give me the original or did they give me the new and I have to find the original? Because then you have to undo the transformations and you have to undo transformations. So the way you put the transformations on was you multiplied then added, right? Or subtracted. So how are you going to take them back off? No. Add, subtract, then divide. You're doing reverse, right? You're taking them back off. Okay. Like reverse bed math. So negative a third and six. So I'm going to get negative 12, comma, negative 2. If the point negative 4, 7 is on the graph of y equals f of x, what will we be on y equals that? This is nice. It's all on one side, and the stretch is taken out. We agree? So whatever's out here affects my y. Whatever's in here affects my x. X is always flipped no matter what. Transformations do not change. That's the great thing. No matter what equation I give you, it follows the same rules. Whatever's out here affects the y. Whatever's in here affects the x. X is always changed. Y's do not. Right? It doesn't matter what equation I give you. So um, my x is going to be 4x plus 2. And my y's are going to be negative 3y minus Seven, and then I plug my point in. Four times negative four plus two, comma negative three times seven minus seven. Negative sixteen plus two is negative fourteen. Negative twenty-one minus seven. Negative twenty-eight. Okay. Um, we're going to skip that one for now. We're going to go to here. So this is the key. What's the problem with 17? Describe a sequence of transformations required to transform the graph of y equals square root x to the graph of y equals square root negative a half x minus 4 plus 10. You have to take the negative a half out. Please don't forget that on the diploma. It's just so easy to forget. We don't want that. It's also so easy to remember. So we're going to go that version. Yes. Okay. So y equals negative a half x and when you take a negative 4 and you're taking out a negative a half you're dividing right so negative 4 divided by negative a half is negative 4 times negative 2 negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8 you can always check with your calculator okay so what are our transformations? We have a horizontal stretch by a factor of, if this was on any test, you would write horizontal stretch by a factor of. The whole thing. No baffo. Okay. Two about the y-axis. We have a ver reflection. Left my reflection out. We have a reflection in the y axis. We would not write ref. We don't have a ref in the y axis. This is it. If a person was marking this, they'd be like, a ref? Where'd the ref come in? This ain't a hockey game. What's up with this? It ain't soccer. Get this out of here. I don't know what this is. Can't assume that they know what your little ref stands for, okay? Reflected in the y axis. Vertical translation 10 up. Vut 10 up. What's that? I don't know. And then hut, <laughs> eight left. So much lingo for the little time. Okay. Eh, what's happening here? Peeps? How's the only way I can get this to be this? The inverse, reflect on the line y equals x. That is the only way I can get a vertical. Really? No. So, what do they ask about this question that you guys get wrong every single time? Okay, so they say to us, what do we restrict the domain of the original to make the new graph a function? What do we restrict the original domain to make the new function work? Okay? What do you guys do? Restrict the range of the new. No, that's not at all what I asked, okay? You can't restrict the domain of the new. Stop it. 
because if you restrict the domain of the new, the domain would not be helpful. This would be the new. If I restricted the domain to be greater than this, I still have two arms. It's not a function for those of you trying to restrict the domain of the new. Then you're like, ah, oh, I'll just restrict the range of the new. Never ever is that asked. It is always asked, what do you restrict the domain of the original to make the inverse be a function? So what is the cutoff point here that would make this graph cut in half? Three. So I could say anything where x is less than or equal to three, or anything where x is greater than or equal to three, or any variance of that is an answer that would work. Because when I draw it, I would only have one arm of the split. Yeah, I'd have this part, or I'd have this part. So I could say anything less than three. So I could say, hmm, x has to be less than or equal to negative 100. And I would technically be correct. Probably not going to be a multiple choice answer, but it's an option because this is technically less than 3. We agree? So it would be an arm way like up here in an invisible space. However, it would still be only a piece of an arm, and if I drew it, it would be sideways and we'd be golden, right? Or any varying of greater than 3. So I could say x it has to be greater than or equal to 4.5. 7, 3, if I went to go right 9. Niner, dot, 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 dot. It would still work, yes? Because it's a variance of this. It needs, your domain needs to fit on these ones, yeah? Okay. So they want the equation. How do I get an equation of an inverse? And solve for? Y. A is a good option because that is often what I'm looking for. Not in this case, but I do like how you're thinking about A. That is good. Okay. Um, the other thing, too, if they give you a point and ask you for an inverse point, what would it be? Just flipped. If I ask you what point could you find, totally different unit. Just bring it up, bring up things that are popping in my head. Um, if I asked you what point could you have if you took the original function f of x and you square rooted it, what point would exist if you square root a function? So if I gave you f of x, and then I gave you square root of f of x. They could give me four points. What would one of the points have to be in order to not work? The y would have to be negative. Y's could be 0, they'd be invariant. Y's could be 1, they'd be invariant. Y's could be positive, they wouldn't be invariant, but they'd exist. You can't take the square root of a negative number, so those ones would be gone. Okay? I'm bringing that back because people forget about it. It has nothing to do with this unit. Not even a transformation. However, it's important. Okay. So, let's get the equation. So, we're going to go x equals y minus 3 squared minus 6. As an aside, they give you this, y equals square root x plus 3. And you're like, well, that's stupid. They forgot the plus or minus signs. Well, I'm going to put them there. No, 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 no. They gave you that. Like, you guys, I've drilled it into your head so hard. You're like, boom, look at them. They're such idiots. They forgot the plus or minus. No, no. They didn't. Um, plus or minus signs only happen if you take the square root, then you put the plus or minus sign, and you're good. If they gave you square root with a plus sign in it, yay. If they gave you square root with a minus sign in front, woohoo. That's it. You don't add the plus or minus and be like, oh, they forgot the silly, silly people. They forgot the Don't. Okay. So here we're going to add our 6, x plus 6 equals y minus 3 squared. Then what am I going to do? Square root it. And when I take the square root of it, I'm going to get positive and negative because I took the square root of it. So now I have square root x plus or minus square root x plus 6 equals y minus 3. And then I'm going to add 3. And I get y equals 3 plus or minus the square root of x plus 6. If I restricted the domain to 3 or negative, like to less than or equal to 3 or greater than or equal to 3, I'd only get one of those. Is there a plus or minus button in your calculator that I've discovered yet? No, I haven't. I'm not saying there isn't because there's so many things in there that I don't really know. Um, you could Google it. There you go, John. No, put away the phone. I trapped you indirectly. <laughs> this this is real. No, he can't. He put it back. He's good. Okay, that was close on so many levels. Okay, phew. 
So there is no plus or minus sign. So we'd have to put half of it into y1 and half of it into y2. You could re rebel and go y3 and y1. You could do that. It would still work. I just hurt my finger. Um, sl uh, slamming the marker into it. That was good. Um, that was hardcore. OK. Twenty. Don't fall for the trick. Easy question, easy to screw up. Do number twenty. Boom. All I have is a reflection in the y-axis. Where does it go with? The x. So when it goes with the x, I'm going to write negative. Is that negative with the x currently? No, if it was with the x, it would be in brackets, and it is not. So we're going to put it in brackets now because I'm going to put negative with the x. That's the only way you're with the x. Squared plus 6. And what do we get? The exact same graph. How does that make sense? Oh, because it is a vertex. It's 0 and 6, and it's concave down, symmetrical about the the y-axis, and if I reflect something that's symmetrical about the y-axis on the y-axis, boom, same graph. It's a negative squared, so it's positive, and then that time a negative. Okay, now, let's amp this up. Instead of a reflection in the y, which is actually easier, I believe, how would you do a <laughs> reflection in the x? That was very funny. Okay, reflection in the x. It already has transformations. When I'm going to apply a negative in front, I have to apply it to the entire original. Do not mess this up. So if I have a vertical stretch or I have a reflection in the x, I'm going to multiply the entire equation, including the vertical translation, by that. So I'm going to get y equals, this is my original, negative x squared plus 6. This whole entire thing is reflected in the x-axis. So I'm going to put a negative in front. In front. So I'm going to get positive x squared minus 6, and you are all going to give me the answer, positive x squared plus 6, and it's going to be there, and it's going to be wrong. But if you thought about it, if you thought about it, and you punch into your calculator, you're going to see, holy, that actually isn't a reflection. What did I do wrong? Oh, I didn't apply it to the Or you just need to write. Yeah. Now, we're going to get y equals x squared minus 6. Okay? For each of these transformations, tell me how many invariant points. Go. Actually, give me the invariant point. They're labeled. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Here, we have a single, this only works because we have single things happening, okay? If I had, like, um, a reflection in something plus a vertical trans, it would throw it right out, okay? So here I have a reflection in the what? X. So it would be? Five. No, it's number five. See, it says for each... It says the invariant point exists at point number five. This one is three, and this one is one. Okay, I'm finishing this up, so you can either stay or go, but I'm going to finish it. So it's five, three, and one. This one, what do we do? We have the graph of y equals f of x. We want the graph of x equals f of y. What are we going to do to each point? Just flip them. So this one's at negative 3 and 1. So it's going to be at 1 and negative 3. This one is at negative 1 and negative 3. So this is going to be negative 3, negative 1. And I'm going to connect them so that I actually know what's connected. 
Um, and then this one is at, oh, this isn't like this at all. One second. Then I'm going to get um, 0 and negative 3, which is going to be negative 3, 0. And then I'm going to have, if you're in here, you have to be quiet. And then I'm going to have 2 and 2, which is going to stay 2 and 2. Now, if we don't know which way to draw our arms, which is actually this way, why would they now be, hor now why would they be vertical lines instead of horizontal? Yes. Horizontal before they become vertical. Remember, when you're doing inverse graphs, when you're doing inverses, the domain of the original becomes the range of the inverse. The range of the original becomes the domain of the inverse. If the original passes the horizontal line test, the inverse passes the vertical line test, and it's a function. So for a lot of the time, you don't actually even have to find the inverse. You can use the original to find all of the stuff about the inverse, right? Um, so if I checked here, I drew a horizontal line, I'd be like, no, it doesn't pass the horizontal line, so then it won't pass the vertical line, and this isn't a function. Did I have to draw this in order to figure that out? No, I could have just drawn a horizontal line and know that the vertical isn't going to work. Okay. Um, ah, that, excuse me. And then algebraically determine if these are inverses of each other. How could we do that? Stop the x and y on the easier one. Solve for y and see if you get the other one. So we'd get x equals 2y squared plus 7. x minus 7 equals 2y squared. What would I have to do first? Divide by 2. It's not looking like it's going to be the same. I could write this as x over 7 divided by 2, or I could write it as a half, um, x minus 7. Either of these are perfectly fine. However, the square root's going to be over the entire thing. And is that what they have? No. So determine, are they functions, inverses of each other? No. They. And then given that f of x equals x plus 3 squared minus 8, determine the equation of the inverse. Stop your x's and y's and solve. So x equals y plus 3 squared minus 8. x plus 8 equals y plus 3 squared. Square root. And I'm going to get negative 3 plus or minus the square root of x plus 8 equals y. Now, um, this one has a vertex at negative, the original has a vertex at negative 3 and negative 8. And it's like this, correct? So my domain is x, e, r. On the inverse, what would my domain be? Not sure. What would my range be? y, e, r because the x's and y's switch, right? My range of this one is going to be greater than or equal to negative 8. So what's my domain of the, the inverse? Just switch them. So it'll be x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 8. Is the inverse a function? Is the inverse a function? No, how do we know? Horizontal line test here is a vertical line test on the inverse, and it doesn't pass. What's the difference between, if I know, if I knew what my x-intercepts were of my original, what would that be of my inverse? What would my x-intercepts be of my inverse? My y-intercepts, because x-intercepts are a number and 0 for y. If I flip them, it would be 0 and a number. So my x-intercepts become my y-intercepts, and my y-intercepts become my x-intercepts, right? Everything just flips. And then what's the restrictions on this one? What would we say? 
x would have to be less than or equal to negative 3, or we could say greater than or equal to negative 3, or any variance of less than negative 3, or any variance of greater than or equal to negative 3, right? So if, if some people say, well, then I could say x has to be greater than or equal to negative 100. Is that true? Is that greater than or equal to negative 3? No, that's less than. This isn't going to work. If I said x has to be less than or equal to negative 100, I'd be fine. But I can't do the other varying level. I think that's it. I think it's other functions. So this we're doing on Friday. <laughs>